Hello everybody, in this video we are going to take a look at the development of Cristiano Ronaldo's English from his teenage years to now. There are a lot of videos of Cristiano speaking English on the internet at various stages of his skill level and I've watched about 30 of them made from 2004 to 2019 and I've been taking notes along the way studying his vocabulary, his grammar, his fluency and accent. By analysing these videos, not only can we track Cristiano's progression, we can also get a rare, if not unique, insight into the progress of learning English as a second language. I'll be grading his English on the Common European Framework Reference for Languages, where A1 is Absolute Beginner and C2 is Proficiency. Which brings me to a point I want to be very clear about. The purpose of this video is not to make fun of Cristiano's English. It's to use the opportunity given to us by this modern technology to analyse his development and see what can be learned from it. Cristiano was born in Madeira, a Portuguese island, in 1985. It's no secret that his academic studies were less important to him than playing football. In 2003, at the age of 18, he moved to the UK to play with Manchester United. This early interview from early 2004 shows his level of English at that time. Yeah, it's, it's a good game, it's a good performance, a team win, it's, it's important. He says just three sentences, all of them are in the simple present. There is no use of the subject pronoun at the beginning of the sentences. Yeah, it's, it's a good game, it's a good performance. Perhaps the greatest indicator of Cristiano's level at this stage is this comment. Team win, it's uh, important. Without doubt, Cristiano is at the beginner level of A1. He uses simple English structures and simple vocabulary, and he makes a lot of mistakes. Moving on to 2007, the first thing to say is that he is a lot more confident and more fluent. He's using short, simple, constructed sentences, which helps him achieve his fluency. After the Champions League, uh, I think uh, the team show it's a little bit tired. It's a very tough game, uh, very difficult. I think Fulham play play very well. I think um, in, uh, in the first in the first minute, I feel good. I keep the ball and I try I try to go to the to the net and I score score goal, important goal, and I'm I'm very happy. Tell me about your goals. He is still talking in only the simple Not present, happy. and by doing so, he is avoiding having to use irregular verbs like told and felt. In the first, in the first minute, I feel good. I keep the ball, and I try, I try to go to the to the net, and I score score goal, important goal, and I'm I'm very happy. But that's okay. Keeping it simple while you are in the early stages of learning a language is essential. It's what we do as young children. It helps with confidence and fluency, which we can see here with Cristiano. He still omits the subject pronoun. It's a very tough game, very difficult. I think Fulham play, play very well. And he has trouble with the articles, the and a. He says, but the football is like that, and you don't think about uh, the, the, the Chelsea. When we would say just football and Chelsea. But articles are difficult to master in English, especially if your native language is a Latin root language, which uses articles more than we do in English, or a Slavic language like Russian or Polish, which don't use articles at all. A lot of improvement here, giving Cristiano a B1 level of English. So he's at low intermediate. Over the next five years, there is surprisingly little progression. In 2009, five years on from that first interview, he is now using pronouns, but he is still using only simple present. 
the result is great to score five goals in the second half. I think is brilliant. Uh, we have to say one point. Uh, I think uh, Carlos Tevez changed uh, a game a little bit because he press, start to press the defenders, and the team go, he push, uh, he push more, and uh, this is why we score five goals. We play brilliant, uh, and we are at the top of the league. It's great. However, as with previous videos, he is not conjugating the tense in the third person singular correctly. He push more rather than he pushes more. When you get beyond beginner level in English, you can begin to go down one of two routes. You can focus your learning on improving your accuracy, getting the correct tense and sentence structures. Or you can go down the fluency route, focusing your attention on delivery, sounding more natural. It's much better to focus on accuracy because fluency will follow naturally. However, if you focus on fluency, accuracy doesn't always follow, as we will see because Cristiano chose the fluency route. I suppose it's understandable. He wants his interviews to flow and sound natural. An interview where he regularly stops to remember the correct word wouldn't make good television. His fluency has helped his confidence at this stage. It's reflected in his sentence constructions. He makes an attempt at reported speech, which is repeating what somebody else has said previously. And he has a go at a conditional, a sentence beginning with if. I will ask Sir Alex about whether it was a penalty, but even if it hadn't been awarded, do you still believe he would have gone on and come back and won this game? Well, the boss say in the first half, we, if we, we score one goal, we score three or four. This is what's, what's up in the game. He uses the zero conditional and he constructs it correctly. But the zero conditional is used to express a regular outcome from a regular action. And he should have used the first conditional. If we score one goal, we will score three or four. What is very telling of his progress is the fact that he uses the word confident, something that he didn't understand in his first interview. Yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant afternoon. This is giving more confidence for the team for the next games. Are you feeling more and more confident with each game? <laughs> no, I understand. Are you, are you confident? <laughs> I understand, sorry. Still a B1 in English because of the mistakes and persistent use of the simple present, sometimes incorrectly, but no doubt there has been a great deal of improvement. Two years later, in 2011, Cristiano gives an interview during his time at Real Madrid. In it, we can see little, if any, progression in his English grammar. And I remember when I, when I go to, to Lisbon with uh, 12 years old, that you imagine is not easy. Because, you know, the conditions that I have there without my father is completely different than if you live with your family and home. When he talks about past events, he still uses simple present forms. And as before, he doesn't conjugate the third person. Because, you know, my mom love, love Madrid. I have to say Marcel is the, is the most funny player in, a, in, a, in the club. Always joke, always put music, always dance, always do that. He push all players. There is also significant miswording in some of his sentences. With years is influenced by the Portuguese of having or being with an age. It's a mistake that he has made in a number of other videos throughout the years. Hi boss, uh, I had this, this chance to send you a message and um, I will share with everyone what you do it for me. If I remember when I when I arrived to Manchester uh, with 18 years old. This error is very common in early English learners, but Cristiano should have corrected that by now. On occasion in this period, he reverts back to the Portuguese Spanish construction of not using subject pronouns. Well, it's always, uh, it's always nice. Uh, I'm unchanged now. It's a good game, it's a good training, good... Uh... He does give us a zero conditional, something that he has got right in the past, but not at this time. Definitely, yes. Uh, you know, when you left your family, when you are young, you have to grow quickly. You know, when the people speak your, your language, is always more easy. 
uh, easily to, to speak with them. One thing I've not really mentioned is his accent. In fact, Cristiano has a very soft but very clear accent. The best players always follow the best players. They want to be uh, in the top of the, the game because they are the ones they are there. Every language has allophones, which are the very slight differences in vocal sounds made from the same letter. In a language that is not your native tongue, allophones are very difficult to spot or correct. In fact, they are very often not taught because native speakers themselves are often unaware of them. An example of an English allophone is the difference of the ow sound in house and houses, the latter having a slightly longer vowel sound. Despite allophones being notoriously difficult, this is something that Cristiano gets perfectly correct. Your private life, you have your girlfriend, you have uh, your cars, your houses, your fame. Over the next few years, little change is made. In 2015, in this interview, we see something of his fluency has returned, but his common errors are also still in evidence. It was when I left my family with 11 years old to live in a different world, which is Lisbon, in the same country, but it looked like it's a different part of the world. One member in the family, a person who have your, your blood, it's, it's unbelievable, it's, it's a great feeling. I was feeling from the beginning that I was different than the other ones. Um, I was more special, I was a special kid. Although he is now using the simple past, including some common irregular past tense verbs, was, saw, for example, Cristiano still has a tendency of avoiding irregular past tense verbs, particularly to avoid the use of less common irregular past tense verbs. For example, he'll say teach rather than taught. Person, you know, he teach me many things. He's like, uh, like I say before, he's like a father for me in a football because he teach me many things. In all of the videos that I've watched, I've never heard Cristiano use a second or third conditional or the past perfect, even though there are times when they should have been used. So you do wish sometimes that you could get up and no one would recognize you? Yes, I wish. I pay for that if it's possible. It also seems that he has limited vocabulary, although this could be because he's only ever really asked questions about football. So you think José is the best coach in the world? And how would you de describe your relationship with him? Well, you mentioned the coach, José Mourinho. What's it like to work under him? Tell me about José as a person and a manager. How has this first year in Italy been for you? Just how good was your year 2012? Was it the best of your career? How great was the season for you? And what was your high point? That's a good question. At this point, I had watched about 25 videos of Cristiano speaking in English, and it's clear that there was an established pattern in his errors. So I thought I would take a look at a more recent video of him speaking in English to see if there is a break from that pattern. There are some emotional parts of the video he did with Piers Morgan in 2019, but I've chosen not to focus on those. It's perfectly understandable to make mistakes when you are being emotional in a language that is not your native language. I never saw the video. However, throughout the interview, we see the same recurring mistakes from the very early days. But you know the football. The football, you never know what, where you're going to play. The life, it's, it's, it's like that, especially the football. You know, when I was a kid, uh, 11, 12 years old, uh, Such as simple present rather than simple past. Jacket, something. And we buy uh, a, a wig with uh, natural hair. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Better than my hair. <laughs> and uh, we go out in a, one hotel in the center of Madrid. Throughout, yes. Cristiano prefers simple sentences rather than compound or complex ones. I think so. And I think it's not something bad. I think it's good. He avoids perfect and perfect continuous tense forms. 
He makes mistakes with his conditionals and prepositions. Depends of rather than depends on. How do you want people to remember you? One of the best players in history. One of or the best? Depend on the taste of the people. I cannot control what the people like. So... Which is an error that occurs in previous videos also. But I know I depend on many people but what i find most frustrating about cristiano's use of english is that he clearly knows the correct grammar and vocabulary we can see this because on occasion he does use the correct form i remember i was in was in lisbon very normal residence i can say a poor residence and i i took him uh, to the residence to the room that I used to live. He can speak English well, he just chooses not to. He goes for fluency rather than accuracy, so continues to make mistakes that could have been corrected very easily in the early stages of his learning, but would probably prove to be more difficult to correct now that his brain has become used to saying these errors. So what is the level of Cristiano Ronaldo's English based on the common European framework for reference of language? Well, it is difficult to say. He avoids complex sentences and less common tense forms, but there are indications that he knows more English than he's actually using. Having said that, he does keep making newbie mistakes. So for this reason, I'm going to give him a low C1. So he's just at the advanced level, but certainly not proficiency. And that's it. I hope you found this video interesting. Don't forget to check out Past Tense of Banana on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.